For behold, in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, this is speaking of the end of that five-month-long hour of temptation when the true Christ returns and the parable of the fig tree is fulfilled with the good figs being gathered back to Jerusalem. That's the elect being gathered from the four winds of heaven to the millennial temple to reign with Christ for a thousand years. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat between Jerusalem and the Mount of Olives. And you can read of this in Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, the thousand years, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. This is the battle of Armageddon. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. So you have two battles taking place here, both fought as you can read in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 3, by our Father, with those hailstones that you can find written of in Revelation chapter 16. That's how he fights that battle of Armageddon, as well as the battle of the Valley of Hamangog that you can read of in Ezekiel 38. Two battles that happen at the same time, the day the Lord Jesus Christ returns, at the end of that five-month-long hour of temptation. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, the feet of the true Christ upon his return, that is to say, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. So there you have it, a second witness in Zechariah chapter 14. So returning to Joel chapter 3 and verse 2, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Now, this is dealing with the enemies of Christianity, including the Kenites. You see that word lots there, and if you look that up, it means stones, and the Kenites are those stones you are to enumerate in order to identify the false Christ, their father, the devil. But you also have to include Edom and Ishmael that make up that bear of Daniel chapter 7, the bear being the communistic as well as the Islamic, in my opinion, and the leopard being the Kenites and their four hidden dynasties in Daniel chapter 7. The lion is the Christian nations who are no longer Christian once they begin to worship the devil. So all that leaves, as far as true Israel are concerned, are God's election and those that come out of the confusion because of what God will say through his elect during the sixth trumpet. Also in Daniel chapter 7, you have Daniel's fourth beast, which is the supernatural ingredient. It's exclusively supernatural, and it has ten horns, and that locust army is part of that fourth beast, them being supernatural as well. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Satan is called the king of Tyrus in Ezekiel 28, and all the coasts of Palestine, the geographical location in which Satan will appear, in Jerusalem, which is in Palestine. Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head, because ye have taken my silver and my gold, and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. His children is what this is really talking about. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. And this applies to the Kenites as well as Edom. When you look at what happened during the world wars and Edom, that is to say Russia and the occupation that happened at that time, But bringing it up to the five months and those four beasts, the lion, the bear, the leopard, which is the Kenites, and Daniel's fourth beast, 
you have a captivity of the mind, a captivity of confusion that begins with that one world political system. And the types of old were Babylon for the lion, the Medes and the Persians for the bear, and Greece for the leopard, which is symbolic ultimately of the Kenites. So again, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. You also have the he-goat, which symbolized Greece as far as the type is concerned, but ultimately you're talking about that Kenite nation. The bad figs, that is to say, those that claim to be of Judah and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. But remember Edom and Ishmael, and especially that fourth beast, as far as this is concerned. It involves all of them. With Armageddon, as you know from Revelation chapter 19, that's where the beast and the false prophet, Daniel's fourth beast, that is to say, is destroyed in the lake of fire. But those of Edom and Ishmael, the bear, that is to say, and in Ezekiel 38, you see the confederacy between Russia and the Islamic nations written of there, and you also have the Kenites. They'll go through the millennium. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them, the children of Judah, and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off, for the Lord has spoken it. And this word Sabians comes from Sheba, which means seven. And this happens at the seventh trumpet, when all seven heads of the one world political system are destroyed at that time. The lion will be destroyed because Christ will take the throne. No longer will there be a human king sitting upon David's throne, but Christ will return, who is king of kings and lord of lords, who will reign with a rod of iron from then on out. So that takes care of the lion. Then you have the bear, and as you know from the book of Obadiah, Edom will be destroyed from being a nation. Not the people, but the system. Communism will be destroyed forever, as well as the Islamic religion. That will be destroyed as well. So that takes care of the bear. And the Kenites will no longer have any power whatsoever, their four hidden dynasties being destroyed and therefore destroying the leopard. And last but not least, as I said, Daniel's fourth beast is destroyed in the lake of fire, meaning all of Satan's angels are destroyed at the seventh trumpet. So that destroys all seven heads of that one world system at that time, and it's the equivalent of the stone that destroys the statue of Daniel chapter 2, that stone being the Lord Jesus Christ upon his return. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. And this has to do with the battle of Armageddon as well as the battle of the valley of Hamangog. Two different battles that happen at the same time on the day that the Lord Jesus Christ returns at the end of the five month long hour of temptation. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, which means Yahweh hath judged. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. And this even ultimately looks forward to the great white throne judgment at the end of the thousand years. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. The harvest is the end of the world, as Christ said in Matthew 13. You can also see this written of in Revelation chapter 14 as far as the wine press is concerned, and that's to purge them of that wine of fornication that they consumed whenever they were worshiping Antichrist. For the day of the Lord, the thousand years, is near in the valley of decision. You got to make a decision. Are you going to love God or are you going to go into the lake of fire with Satan? It's entirely up to you. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining upon the return of the true Christ. The brightness of his coming outshines the sun, moon, and stars. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem through his election, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel." 
So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her any more. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountain shall drop down new wine, and the hill shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and a fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord, and shall water the valley of Chittim. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness, for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. Again, looking back to the events that transpired in the 1940s with the Berlin Wall and the occupation of the land that Judah migrated to, as well as spiritually speaking, and this one world system that caused a third to die spiritually whenever Satan appeared as the false Christ. Edom shall be destroyed from being a nation, as you can read of in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Those hailstones come out of heaven from God, and they are destroyed forever from being a nation. They will go through the millennium, though, as well as the Kenites and those of Christianity that were deceived, those first three beasts of Daniel 7. If you read Daniel 7 in its entirety, then you'll understand what I'm saying. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Lord dwelleth in Zion. And so it shall be, after the thousand years are finished, the full Godhead will be here on earth. And that's when the great white throne judgment transpires, and then it's decided who goes into the lake of fire and is blotted out of existence, and who goes into the third world age.